society and finds himself in exile in his own land. People have invaded or been invaded, but there's another thing to wipe out the memory of their history until they themselves not only forget, but begin to preach and to propagate the same fiction about themselves that others have propagated. Well, this is a big one. I'm coming to join you, honey. All of what we became in our greatness itself is coming back to us in a whole new format. It's the street dust. And here's the Star Wars show in your house. L Kiss 92.3 Real Definition Internet Radio Sunday Fun Day. We are in the building. The gangs are here. Baby Longway is on the way. Our special guest is in place. My man D Mose is finishing up the final touches, trying to make sure everything's straight so that uh, Mr. Ken Ivy here can go live for his uh, viewers out there in, uh, in the world. We're going to get into the interview here in a second, man. It's a very exciting day. We need a. Uh, uh, Yes, sir. A charger. A charger. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get get him uh, get, situated with a charger. We get about seven, 8,000 views. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We need that in, in our life. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, yeah. so the lovely voice you were hearing over there, the smooth, silky voices of my brother, Chief Red Wolf. What's going on, brother? Peace. What's peace. going on? What's going on? What's going on? to the world. Yes, yes, yes. And then, of course, the man uh, that we are all here to talk to today, the brother. Do you now, what do you like to go by, brother? Well, a lot of people call me Professor Ken. Professor Ken? Yeah, a lot of people. I got a, uh, I got a little blog that we do with, uh, it's called In the Den with uh, Professor Ken. And a lot of times they, they refer to me as Professor Ken because I be dropping that knowledge and that wisdom and understanding. Yes, sir. And giving a lot of brothers, you know, that third eye you did. I feel you, Professor. Professor Ken, man. That, now, you have come a, a, a long way. It's been an interesting journey. From how you started off in the game to where you got now, so we're gonna jump into all of that stuff uh, when we come back from our um, from our first song break. I think he is up and running. Are we good? Is he ready? Is he ready? Yeah, I got one of them things. Yeah, 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 right there in front of you. Oh, uh, that black thing right there. Yes, sir. Oh, you just leaning against it. On Instagram. Oh, oh, he got that charger on it. He got that charger on it. Huh? Forgot how to go live, man. Show me how to go live. <laughs> it's all good. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and go to our first song of the day. We're gonna get set up, and then when we come back, go ahead. Uh, that one right there, yes sir. When we come back, we will be talking to the pimp, the professor. Actually, may I say. Street Gospel Show his night two point three real definition of internet radio. Past the Troy yeah, featuring yeah, Pimpin. Let's go. Should be- Street Gospel Show. We are back. Sunday Fun Day hits ninety two point three. Real definition of internet radio. Got Pimpin Ken, aka or real name Ken Ivy, the man Ken Professor Ken Ivy. Ken Ivy in the building. Uh, it is a great day. Uh, Demo, say something to people, man. We didn't get to introduce you, man. Was good. Was good, man. You How know, you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, man. It's a good day, man. It's a good day. It's yeah. a nice, cold looking, hot. November, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man, I'm really excited. That. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, the man, oh, the legend, international. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. special. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, excited I'm to nice pick with his it, man. Yes, sir, yes, right, sir. Right. We've been doing this a long time. Yes, sir. So, with that being said, um, let's get into it. Sir, yes, how sir. are you doing today, sir? You good? I'm well, I'm well. That's I'm good, well. that's good, that's good. Um, I just recently met you on Monday of Monday. this week. But I've probably been following along with you, I think, most of my life, probably. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of game on Yeah, yeah, like, most of my life I've been, you know, you've been around in the culture, in the psyche of the people, um, whether in the front or in the back. You've been pretty much all over the place, right? Hey, what's up, little 
Pimpin'. This is your boy PimpinKen.com from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What's up, Pimpin'? What's up, Pimpin'? Oh, man, these bitch-ass niggas, man, you know what I'm saying? They tried to take me out, man, you know, even though I'm not Tupac, man, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to kill on my motherfucking block, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna take the time out, you know what I'm saying, and let them know that Pimpin ain't dead and post some game out for the sucker shit that they said, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, hey, what? man, you know, I just want these busters to know, man, pimps don't die, we multiply, you know what I'm saying? Well, Pimpin Ken say, don't down him, crown him. Preach! Preach! Right. And so I, I was very interested to do this interview. I'm very interested in getting uh, the whole story of how you got to this point because it's an evolution. All right. uh, and it's, it's the exact thing that we talk about here on the show when I meet brothers. Mm -hmm. You should see, for brothers that are really on a path, you should see a, a strong before and a strong after. Right. When a man has truly come through something and mm -hmm. changed and grown wiser and more mature in his years. And you're a perfect example of that. Right. And so... Um, I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you. And then, um, oh, no problem, brother. And then let's get into it. So, how did how did you start out just in life? Like, well, first of all, I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, my father, you know, they came from uh, Oxford, Mississippi. You know, my daddy was a player. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying my uncles was players. You know, they they thought they was country boys, but you know, really they had a lot of game. So they came, you know, to Chicago. You know, they uh, burnt that town up. And they had to move quick because they was trimming dudes, you know, shooting pool and shooting dice and mm -hmm. cooking dice and all that stuff. And then they ended up moving to Milwaukee. So we moved to Milwaukee. You know, uh, that's pretty much where it all began. You know, I had the appetite for the game. I wanted to be like my daddy. My daddy's name was Johnny Slick. So I really wanted to be like Pops, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pops was really having a lot of money. You're talking about shoe boxes full of money and talking about Cadillacs and convertible Cadillacs. I so seen that my whole from, life, you know what I'm saying? So I was born in the game. Yeah. Like, I really was born in the game. You know, my daddy yeah. was really in the streets. My uncle was in the streets. You know, they sold drugs, <laughs> pimp, you know what I'm saying? Had after hours and all that. So, you know, I was kind of like, pretty much a product of my environment you right, know what right. i'm saying it so it was in your bloodline it was in my bloodline mm -hmm. so basically what i did was you know at an early age i started you know hustling i started uh begging for quarters and shit you know i was on the street like these little niggas bag for quarters we didn't really need the money we was just hustling right then we started you know my brother came up with this, this scheme that we could steal from walk for walgreens so we used to steal from Walgreens, <laughs> get the cologne and shit. Then my brother would sell the cologne, and I would help him sell the cologne. He'd do all the stealing. I'd just watch out for him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that kind of just tied me into the streets, and I started meeting Milwaukee niggas and shit that was hustling. Then niggas was like, man, y'all stealing cologne, man. We need to start stealing watches. So we started stealing watches and shit. Mm -hmm. Then I, my ass, my crazy ass did some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? And what I did was, uh, I guess I, somebody trying to call me. You got a punch number? Mm -hmm. Call Punch and tell, let him know where he's probably trying to get in. Okay, okay. So uh, my crazy ass man, you know what I'm saying, I tried to cash some checks. So mm -hmm. I called my first federal case at 14. At 14, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm in juvenile center, you know what I'm saying, me? Mm -hmm. This and, Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. this in the mill. So I catch my first case, you know what I'm saying, me? And then they sent me upstate to the, the, the reformatory school for, uh, for three months. Mm -hmm. Get out, go to Chicago, call attempted murder. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, I was like, man, I keep getting in some bullshit and I wouldn't even, it wasn't even my case, it was my brother's case, I was just there and they gave me a case. So I'm in the Cook County Jail at 14 years old, a mm -hmm. grown man prison with GDs, vice lords, Latin kings, killers, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I mean, no we had to box our way through that, you know All what I'm right. saying, me and my brother, you know what I'm saying? Fortunately, they kept us together, they never separated us, you know what I'm saying? We ended up getting three months and then, you know, we got out of there, mm -hmm. then I got, I went back to jail and then finally, you know what I'm saying, me, you know, I came home, I got me a, like a year stretch out, and I was fucking with my nigga JD. So JD was like a pimp, you know what I'm saying? He's a mm -hmm. young nigga, he was pimping him, he used to steal jewelry and shit together. So he Not was Jermaine like- Not Jermaine ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so he was like, <laughs> man, so, so deaf. I'm <laughs> pimping now, you know? He like, I'm pimping now. So I said, okay, you pimping now? I said, well, peep gang. I said, man, I want to get in the game too. So I went over his house one day, he had three bitches there, one was a yellow bitch. I said, I like them light bright with the pussy candy stripe. You know what I'm saying? I like yeah. that yellow mellow right there. I said, let me have that bitch. He said, you can have that bitch, Ken. So that was my first bitch, Dirty Red. So that bitch was 23. Uh -huh. I'm 16. So she put me in the game, gave me the game. Then I knocked this other nigga for his bitch, you know what I'm saying, me uh -huh. at 16. And that's how I got my name in the game. You know what I'm saying? I was the youngest. I probably one of the youngest dudes at that time that was peeling dudes that was 28. So it was a broad name, Bridget. So you, you, you really started off you ran the gamut of enterprises uh man I, <laughs> man man I, from five years old no bullshit niggas think i'm lying man my mama verified this you know from five years old until 
you know, to now, man, mm-hmm. I've always been, like, in the streets. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people be like, man, Ken, you all, you over here on the on, you, you, you on the south side, you on the east side, you in Decatur by yourself, riding around here with no security. I said, nigga, I got security, my social security card, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I don't need no security, you know what I'm saying? Me? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm in these streets for real, you know, yeah. I'm about this life. So I understand these young dudes, you know what I'm saying? Because I've right. been in reformatory school, then, you know, to finish the story, the, the bra wouldn't get enough money, so mm-hmm. I, I kept robbing banks and, and robbing jury stores. Yeah. So I ended up going to state penitentiary, did three years and that shit. Then I ended up going back, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to the feds. Now, what year yeah. is this? What year are we talking around this Man, time? this is like in the early 70s and early 80s and 70s. shit, okay. you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Then, so when I went to the feds, that's when I had epiphany, man. I woke up, I said, man, I was around brothers with knowledge, you know, mm-hmm. Muslim brothers, Moorish brothers, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, me, uh, five percenters and they was like you know like yeah give me a lot of wisdom and no, knowledge and understanding so i started studying with the moles and i became a moorish american you know yes, what i mean and then go. that kind of changed my perspective you know right, what i'm right, saying right. on game then i really understood the teachers of the honorable noble Drew Ali. Mm-hmm. so i seen life differently you know right. what i mean i didn't look at the way i look at it so when i got out though you know what i mean i had to eat so my man tried to throw me a bag i tried that man that didn't work for me well, i gave my i gave i gave a dope thing Credit, you know what I'm saying? Never gets no big credit. <laughs> so, man, that, so now I'm in the hole. This nigga got me. Now I got to come up with a yeah, band to pay this nigga that gave me an ounce. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so I'm like, man, this shit ain't working, man. So you know what I mean? You know, I mean, women always love me. Right. So I just started getting action like, man, crazy. I mean, they was choosing up. I just started getting all these bad bitches. Right, right. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm putting them, you know, on the market. You know facts, what I'm saying? Facts. And next thing you know, uh, I'm in New York, and uh, them niggas try to play me. You know what I'm saying? They knock me for a bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just giving you the pimp and king right, side. Right, right. You know so what I'm saying? So what does that mean? <laughs> what does that yeah, mean? So knock, knock you for a yeah. bitch is when a nigga take you for your bitch. So a nigga actually took my bitch, right? Right, right, right. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? He took he took the bitch from me. I said, I'm cool with that. So what I did, you know what I'm saying? Me was uh, I went back to Milwaukee. I money up. Mm. Then I went back on the track and I started throwing payday candy bars at them niggas. You know what I'm saying, niggas? Yeah, yeah. At their bitch, I said, hey, bitch, make it a pippin' kid and pay that. You know what I'm saying? Then every time I knock them, I give them a Wall Street Journal and put bananas in and say, niggas, in the news, you been peeled for the bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> then I started putting ketchup bottles by their cars and shit. Every time I knock them, I said, nigga, get out the mustard ketchup because mine's thick as high well, as well, yours me, and they'll me, be thick as mine. You did? Let me ask you this. Uh, when, when did you realize you was such a. Uh, you always have, have to have been colorful. Mm-hmm. Like your whole life, you've been entertaining and people have gravitated to because it seems I never knew it though. But that shit's creative. Like, I wouldn't I, even bro, had the time I don't to put even a know. Wall Street Journal and a banana and then put a rhyme bro, to it. And, bro, like, in that's the pimp, a talent in, within hey, itself, right? right in right. the pimp game, right? You know, you, you, you only as good, you know, as your delivery. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, you right. know, you, you got to be swift with it, right, quick right. with it. So, my thing was, you know, I would sit back in my hotel room. You know, if I'm out of town, just think of what can I do, you know what I'm saying, to impact these dudes so they won't look at me as a sucker or a right. lame. Yeah. Because they everybody's comp- compete for the same thing. See, in the drug game, yeah. you know, you get an ounce of dope, you know what I'm saying, you flip it. Right. The bitch was the dope. You know, we were selling crack to crack between the bitch back, you know what, yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> that was the crack, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. you know, when you look at it from that pers- perspective, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. me, you know, it's, it's a whole different campaign, you know. Right, so, right, right. so these niggas, they trying to knock me, mm-hmm. I'm trying to knock them. You know, it was psychology. You right. know, I wrote the book, The Art of Human Chess. I talk about it in my book, oh, how I used to knock to niggas yes, for their bitches and shit. Yeah, yeah. So I just developed a strategy. So by me being knowledgeable and uh-huh. having all that wisdom and education, being in the penitentiary all them years, I was just naturally smarter than them niggas. Right. So I used my wit and my intelligence to off finesse them. Mm-hmm. So I knew that psychology, so the banana, you know what I'm saying, me, mm-hmm. is appeal. Right. The newspaper is where you read. So I just would automatically say, if I get this newspaper and put this banana in, and I get this nigga this banana in this newspaper, he know that he been peeled for the bitch, yeah. and it's in the news. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's in the news. So ketchup, if you go ketchup, you know what I'm saying, yeah. ketchup, you know, the, it's metaphorically, it means to catch up. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. So I think of Heinz. So I say, my game is thick as Heinz, and yours never be thick as mine, right. which is ketchup. So I would say mustard. You right. know, mustard is when you get stained. Yeah. So I say, get out the mustard and catch up. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. it was stuff like that. Or I say, you know, I don't need her. I let the welfare feed her. Right, right. You know what I mean? I don't need her. Now, were you, were you, were you did you have like a, a mentor or like or was an OG or something that you saw had some of this sauce and then you just added your yeah, own man, to it? Yeah, man. We had some big time pimps named mm-hmm. Rob Robinson, Tommy Dixon. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Me, uh, Chicago. You know, some mm-hmm. real pimp niggas out of Milwaukee. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? 
that that you know but you got to remember though my daddy now was the niggas yeah. so i really yeah. never looked up to a nigga right, right, right. Right. you know right, like right, even right, when right, i right. seen don juan don juan wasn't as attractive to me as he was to a lot of other people i mean like i wasn't he so wasn't riding him like yeah. that. i mean yeah. i mean i loved him and respect him as right. the og but right. it wasn't like I didn't never see a big nigga before because right, my father right, that was right, big right. niggas. I'm talking about yeah, with, with, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with yeah, millions yeah. of dollars. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And respect you all. You tell when a nigga never had a big yeah. homie before or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I felt my like daddy, that's my uh, grandfather. So I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. What my he's. daddy, my daddy raised me. So you right, know what right. I'm saying? Me like he never left us. You know, until right. I, my daddy died when I was probably about 45, 46. You know, he never left us. He was there all the time. He be gone grinding, hustling and shit, but he was always there. And you he's know, a real father. yeah, he's a real father. He used to beat the me. shit out of me too. Right. He used to whip me with stitching like cords. Alpha male father. Yeah, 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 yeah. my <laughs> father used to beat the shit out of me with stitching cords. I'm yeah. like, we got real ass whoopers. Like, these niggas talking about they got a spanking. Nigga, we didn't get spanking. We got that, <laughs> that Mississippi slave ass whooping yeah, you said with Oxford, the whip. Right? Yeah, yeah, Oxford, Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah, you know, because his daddy, daddy was a slave. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So that's how they was taught. Right, you know what I mean? To whoop niggas with with stitching cords. So you know what I'm saying? One time, I, I just I just put my dukes up, say, "Oh, motherfucker, he ain't gonna whoop me no more." <laughs> Pops fired on me so quick, man. Man, I had a black eye and shit, man. I had some GD glasses on, which is what we call it, Milwaukee, right. where you wear dark glasses. Mm -hmm. That means you got beat up. You know what I'm saying? What did he say to you about the game that you got decided to do? Well, my daddy yeah. did. My daddy didn't. He knew we was hustling and mm -hmm. shit, but he didn't really know I was in the game until mm -hmm. I pulled up on him at 17. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, me? So when I pulled up on him at 17. I had me, bought me a, 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 a two seater Benz, you know, a two eighty Benz, and you know, I mean, I had all this jewelry on, yeah, yeah. and you know, I walked 17. to him, yeah, I walked yeah. to him, and, yeah, and because that's all I knew, right, I, right. that's all I see, I seen them do it, so I thought that was the thing right, to right. do. I mean, it was hook or crook, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take it or make it, you know what I mean? It was that I time. I had to have it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I get, so when I see pops in the after hour, and, he, and I'm betting this nigga, I'm saying, better hit for two thousand. So I'm gambling, and my daddy walked in there. He was like for two thousand. Yeah, he, but 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 cause my daddy don't even make two thousand right, right, dollar right. bets. No, you know, that's he, big money, especially he, so, back then. Yeah, so yeah. Pops was looking at me, and he he was just like, you know, damn nigga, you know what I mean? You out here, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we develop a love where we just talk about everything. He right. would tell me everything. It was shit like my daddy had bitches and shit. I didn't even know he had bitches until I I got older. And you know he had bitches that own bars and yeah, shit. Yeah, Pops yeah. was pimping like a motherfucker, but I didn't know it. You know oh, what I'm so saying? It was, in you, it was in you already. You just didn't. Yeah, know you yeah man. You know, what I mean? <laughs> man, my uncle Greasy, man. Yeah, them yeah. niggas had five, six bitches. You know, right, so right, right. this all I see. Yeah. Right. Then yeah. every nigga respected me because if I said, "Hey, Johnny Slick, my daddy," then pulled. the old niggas would let me come fuck with them, like yeah. Jim, Danny, and and all the other, because mm. they respected my pops. You know, right, it's right. like, when somebody says, my little son Supreme say, Pippin Kid, my daddy, niggas automatically got love for him because they got love yeah. for me. Right, right, That's how right. I was able to get so much love. And a lot of niggas taught me a lot of game because, you know, I was Johnny Slick's son and they thought that I knew all the slick shit right. he knew. So actually a lot of niggas, you know, would give me game thinking that I was already up on game. You know what I'm saying? So I act like I knew shit, you know what I mean? Then I take the game that that nigga gave me and tell another nigga that I got game. I want folks to hear what, what, what he's saying, man, because it's legacy, which we deal with bloodline, tribal affiliation, all that, right. reestablishing nationality, all those things. Legacy is important, man. Where, where your kids, when they walk out the door saying their father's name, that used to be exactly. a big deal. Like exactly. you say, I'm so and so's father. A name that is, meant something, is right? Worth more yeah, than now, gold. now it seems like cats don't care, but that's yeah. it's important, man. You building, you're not just out here blazing the trail for yourself. You're blazing the trail for the generations that come after you, right. specifically your generations and offspring. If you ain't out here saying your own kids, but you but, know, hey, listen, you know, hey, let's make it uh, clear: we're not glorifying it. We're just giving y'all uh, a chronological facts. order. We're gonna right. get to the yeah, we get, yeah, we go, yeah, yeah, we're going through. I, that's yeah, it. We yeah. want it all because yeah. you, you, uh, you got to see the whole evolution, right? You have to see the evolution of a person yeah. to really yeah. understand. The story is, is why what it makes matters, him who right, he right. is. The story is who makes you is. That's what it's y'all now. Y'all gonna get to? We're gonna get to the point how I made millions of dollars. Okay, we're gonna get to that. Well, listen, let's 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 go to to another song. Give me do or die. Do you man? Do or die. Do you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll go to that. And uh, when we get back, more with Pimp and Ken, better known as Ken Ivy. The you got to play a poncho in the building. Oh, and play a poncho man. is in the building. Play a poncho. What's up? What's, What's up, up yeah, 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 yeah. ATL legend. If y'all don't know who that is, man, y'all y'all can't be from this town. Yeah, man. Uh, at <laughs> all. <laughs> at <laughs> all. So, <laughs> so we're going to so go ahead. You ready? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of low down weird. So oh, it's cool. Second. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We out of this thing, man. Hits 92.3, the real definition internet radio, street gospel show, Sunday, fun day. Do you. 
Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. We back are back TV. in the building. Hits 92.3, the real definition of internet radio. Sunday, fun day, street gospel show. Brandon David L in the building. Baby Long with his shoulder. Baby Long, say hello real quick on the microphone, sis. Hey, everybody doing today? There she go. There she go. What's so, up, baby? We, we do have, uh, we have multiple female representation, so we good. All right. <laughs> yes. B Moses in the building. <laughs> What's good, what's good? Clay Poncho is in the building. Clay yes, sir, yes, sir. What's going on, y'all? What's Chief, going on? Chief Red Wolf yeah. is in the building. We in here, we in yes, here. Yes, sir. And of course, the man, the international player, Pimper Ken, Ken Ivy is in the building. Okay. What's good, my brother? Uh, All right, so we are back. We pimp left to the off. Professor. Yes, from the pimp to the professor. Uh, that's, that's the, that's that the name of the, the that's the show. name of the show right there. From the pimp, <laughs> pimp to, the to the professor. All right, so. Uh, in our journey of the pimp going to the professor, we left off. You telling us about uh, your father. I was asking you. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, you got your, the, the, the talking from and the yeah, yeah. So my most of my slick talk come from really just being in the streets all your life. See, when you in the streets all your life, you know you hear OG spitting game, and then you know it's just like a rapper. You be like, man, I'm gonna say something slicker than that. So. My my lines are the most quotable lines in the world. Nobody Facts. ever got no fact. more quotes than me. Facts. I'm on 40 million records, literally, my nigga. I I'm on 50 it. Cent album. I'm on Jermaine Dupri album, Too Short, Little John, Pastor Troy. Uh, I think Ice you're a rapper. You might I be mean, a rapper. Every, <laughs> no, I'm not a rapper. I'm not a rapper. Let's get that, because you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I didn't go platinum off my vocal cords. I went platinum on pussy, man. You know what I'm saying? I went platinum on pussy, man. Yeah, yeah. I sold a million dollars of pussy before yeah, I even yeah. got on the mic, so yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm, a, I, I, I'm the definition of a street with, with Puffy. All of them, they need that street credibility. They, they need the you. real. They call me. Yes, right, Puffy right. flew me in Atlanta, man. Get, I forget the name of the uh, hotel next to the mm. mall. He got me a hotel. He got in my movie, uh, Ghetto Streets Executive Suite. Mm. I'm type of nigga. These niggas don't charge me nothing, man. Right, right. They and can't. All the rap niggas respect me and love me because they know the I'm a real motherfucker. Right, right. You understand me? Ask Baby about me. You know what I'm saying? Me, before, well, ba before Baby ever sold one million records, I was fucking with him, you know what I'm saying? Right. In the N.O., you know what I mean? All them niggas know me. They knew at the time, you know what I mean, when I was in the game. We had real bitches, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, real right. bitches, you know, was on deck. You know what I'm saying? That was the old school me. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? Yes, you know what I'm saying? I, I speak a lot of shit, but I'm also intelligent, you know? Very. I think you got to be to even put like it together the way you do. Like yeah. I told one dude, he said, man, that's all you know. And then I said, well, man, watch this. I said, as a pragmatic prevaricate, prevaricate with the propensity for all talks and all that, I find my speech to be, my speech to be a, a bit... Uh, 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 to, you know, I don't, man, it's just so mild. Man. I don't know that. You know well, what I mean? I, I can just, I can just, I got so many levels of game and so many ways to spit it. I don't man, just. Spit, I sat down I and had a conversation with you about Noble Drew Ali, brother. That's when I know you was the real one, for real, a real OG who understood history and a real story. And he's delivered that smoothly. Uh, what do you? What yeah, he was talking yeah. about but that. no, but what, the point that I'm trying to say is that Not you know what, what I'm saying is, is is don't look at me. And, and don't see my gift. Right. See, my gift is without repentance. You know what I'm saying? When you see me Fact. speaking, that's that. You know, those are my gifts. You know what right. I'm saying? Your gift is the byproduct. The money is the byproduct of your gift. So people understand. They say, King, you made a lot of money talking. Yeah, I made a lot of money talking. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it ain't just you know talking slick. You know what I right, mean? Right. I also talked to corporate America. Like when we was at the meeting, I told mm -hmm. you, you know, right. I just did uh, about two million dollars worth of deals. Right. You know, I just signed Boosie. I just signed Corey Wise, I just signed Ice T. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we're gonna sign a whole bunch of other uh people like Yellow Beezy. You know, we sent uh, a contract over there to a baby now, mm -hmm. people, little baby people, right, you right. know, and we offered six figures, you know. And you know, you ask yourself, how do you go from pimping on the bitch to working with corporate America? You know, but the company I was actually about to ask the you. The company that, that question, I work right. with is CBS. Mm -hmm. That's who own Simon and Schuster. Right, right. You know, I did a book called Pimpology. Oh, that okay, okay. That Pimpology, right, they right. signed me to a, a six figure deal. They gave me a quarter million dollars. Right. Wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is why from a book. This one this one I was still in the streets. Books make money, folks. Yeah. But I'm the first <laughs> but but don't, don't, hey, don't get it twisted. Twenty five years ago I brought HBO to Milwaukee, which was a billion that, dollar. I was company. gonna ask you so okay, so you're in the streets, you're doing the thing. How do you what happens where you go you're just in the streets and then HBO? Well a lot of people say, Ken, I wanna be like you I said, okay, well, man, you got to do about 10 years in the penitentiary. You got to get shot by three times. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, yeah. You got to have niggas, you know, trying to rob. You got to be shooting back and doing all kind of shit. I said, you know, you got to be up and down. You got to lose a lot of money. You got to get a lot of money. I said, you still want to be me? And they say, no. Well, see, it's not, it's, you know, everybody know my glory, but they don't know my story. Right. Right. When you do 10 years in the penitentiary, 
and you sitting down, you reading anything. When they put you in a hole, you read News Weekly, you read Business Weekly, you start just reading any kind of book. You read right, about right. Socrates, you read about right. Karl so Marx. Yeah. And, you know, so that, I didn't know that that was seasoning me and preparing me mm -hmm. for what I'm doing now. Right. You know, I was educating myself out of boredom, mm -hmm. you know, being in solitary confinement. But as a result of that, you know what I'm saying, me, I ended up going to college while I was in prison okay, and I got okay. a four point average, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I was on the dean list and I just started, oh, so, so. cause okay. I, couldn't, I, I couldn't read or write, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? The first book I ever wrote, read in this entirety was Iceberg Slim. So, so that's why I get the Ken Ivy Literacy Program, mm -hmm. which is what I work with with Selma and Schuster. So when right. I work, you see me work with these artists, that's what we're trying to do, we try to right. teach literacy. So when I read that book at 19, in its entirety, then I started reading Donald Gorn's books. Then mm -hmm. I started reading all other kind of books, and then I started practicing with the Muslims, reading their books, and right. the Christians, and reading their books, and the Moors, and reading their books, and just mm -hmm. started reading Dr. Ben, you know, uh, the black man in Aldous family, mm -hmm. uh, Ivan Van Sertiman, they came before Columbus, you they know, came before Carter, Columbus, Carter, Carter G. Wilson, Carter and, G. Wilson, and Wilson. all these uh, Afrocentric books, right, right. and next thing you know, you created a monster. Mm -hmm. But I still had that street shit in me, so when I went to the street, I went back to the streets. Mm -hmm. But then when HBO gave me the opportunity, and I was in Chicago, and I had about six, seven hoes at the time, they was filming me, I, it just popped on me. All that shit that I learned, it just it, it popped. A light bulb popped in my head. I said, "If these people is from HBO and they shooting us, I said it's some money behind this." So what I did was, I was able to get HBO to leave Chicago and come to my clothing store. The clothing store. I was always a businessman. Come to Milwaukee. So when they came to Milwaukee, what I did was, I was able to get you know a substantial amount of money out of them. And not only I became the. Uh, the consultant for the film, if you read the credits, mm -hmm. he got me as one of the consultants of the, of the film. And not only that, I made sure that they end the movie with me because by mm -hmm. taking public public speaking courses mm -hmm. in college, I knew that the, 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 the keynote speaker was always the right, last right, speaker. Right, right, right. So I wanted to be the keynote speaker in the movie. Now, you know what what I mean? it, now what's the name of this uh, if folks are trying to go uh, see this? Oh, Pimps Up, Holds Down. Just type it up in YouTube. You'll see it oh. or go... And get it on Netflix or something. Nah, I definitely Netflix. remember watching that when I was way up, right. when I probably should have been in bed. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't supposed to be up watching that it. That was like my first introduction. Yeah, I was watching. <laughs> yeah, in general, yeah, I was watching, was watching anything that. with those ratings. If it had S on there for sexuality, any of that oh, stuff. Yeah. So I, was, yeah, I, I, caught, I caught it late night on it HBO. It was interesting, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting. So, so HBO shows up. You do the HBO deal. You you finesse a sm smart move. With but them. but one of the negotiations the in that deal, where you're gonna see my brilliance come in at, was yeah. I also negotiate that I can film too. So I, as they were spending a lot of money, I, was, I had a camera crew follow me too. Yeah. So I shot the movie Pimpology. Okay. So you got to remember, <laughs> I was shooting the sequel at the time they were shooting the actual project. Right, right, right. So you know what I'm saying? So when when, when the, the next project come up was my project, it was called Pimpology, mm -hmm. and I sold millions of copies. I made a lot of money. I had three, four, I had a, a, a deal with Scriptmaster, I had a deal with uh, Mike Walker, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Distribution, I had one with uh, Selecto here. You know what I'm saying? All these mm -hmm. uh, people, Gave me distribution deals, right. and I was since I had a lot of game, I was able to finesse all three of them. They didn't even know that it was the right. same movie. I just changed the cover and put a different uh, uh, cut. I do pipology, I do pipology, pipology cut. Then I do pipology, the director's cut. So I, I sold, I sold it to three different <laughs> distribution companies right, right. and got paid. And I made them I always tell them I said I need promotional copies, so they give me. Five thousand copies. Been a mood of so that's that's how the pip, that's why the pivot people know that's how Pippin Ken started selling DVDs right, right. mainly was because I was getting so many uh, <laughs> copies from promotion guys and I'm like mood, people walk smart. up to me like what's up Pippin can I take a picture with you I said yeah man you, you take a DVD. picture with me but you got to buy a DVD though yes, sir. so yes, they buy sir. a DVD they take a picture and it was a marketing tool right, right. so out of that you know I, I created six more films and then I, it just hit on me one day I said I'm selling flyers. Right. So I sell my DVDs like they flyers. So people don't throw away $20. Nah. So when they buy it, I guarantee myself that they go home and watch my movie. So that was a marketing strategy that I used, you know. So, so, uh, like not that. to interrupt, just, so you're doing all these deals with these corporate entities. And these white dudes are just letting you do whatever. Were they trying to were they trying to skew you towards making it more straight? Bro, were they trying to bro, change what you were trying to give them? Bro, I could finesse you out of $20, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I could come up run some quick game on you, finesse you out of $20. Right. And it may work. Mm -hmm. The white people ain't no different. <laughs> you, know what I'm you, just, you just take your level to another you level. Gotta try, right? you gotta I'm finessing them motherfuckers, <laughs> man. Are you good? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, yeah, yeah. man. I, I, I know before you went hey, anyway. How, how many motherfuckers you know that don't got a PhD that's a literary agent 
it with all 16 of the major publishing companies in the world yeah, and they ca- they brothers. call they call me with respect right you know what i'm saying they don't call me talk to me like i'm a little nigga they talk to me like you know right, like right. on some big meat uh larry hoover shit you right. know like i'm a big dog in my field you know right. not saying i'm big beach or larry hoover but i'm just yeah, saying yeah. The, the, just the example of how they respect niggas in the street respect them that's right, how the right. white folks in the executive suites respect me you right. know what i'm saying so a lot of them motherfuckers you know they call me when they call me you know they try to t- tell me like they try to get iced tea a certain amount of money i can't talk about it because of the contract and i went back in there and i negotiated and i negotiated up and we got way more money than they would initially and we got where we could get another advance that's how right. i am that's i mean they can't finesse me you know what I'm yeah, yeah. i got too much game it's finesse you know what I'm saying? so finesse. so when they come at me i'm popping right back right, right, so right. my mind think just like if i'm trying to play a nigga, mm-hmm. you know trying to play a bitch, you know right, what i mean right. it's the same way but you you play a white folk right, right, right. you know what i'm saying but they just as easy as the dudes on the streets you just that you know you intimidated by the titles and the sheepskin and the, the letters behind the name md right, right. and phd and all that i'm not intimidated by right, that right, shit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, stop. yo, I'm like, look here, man. You know, stop the press, man. This is what we gonna do. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this what this is. Uh, Ice T should get this. Lil Boosie should get this. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then you know, I have to, you know, Michael manage shit. You know what I mean? You know, because I'm giving them management, not damage. So it's a lot of, you know, things that you got management, to learn. Not da- management, not damage. Management, not damage. Management. Yeah, they got damage. Management. Yeah, they got damage. Management. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's facts. So, so you you got the DVDs popping. Mm-hmm. When now back back to you said the first book you read was Iceberg Slim. Iceberg Slim. Right. Was that Diary of a Pimp or No, Pimp uh, Disturbed My Life. Pimp Disturbed My Life. Okay. Did you ever got a chance to actually talk to him? Did you before? I never you, met Iceberg never met Slim. Him? Okay. I wish I could have. Okay, I was just wondering if maybe because I'm guessing he was one of your inspirations to start your own writing journey. But you gotta remember, I was in the streets hardcore right. until thirty one. Right, right. You right, see right. what I'm saying? HBO didn't come to me until I was thirty one. Okay. So so Iceberg Slim any famous person didn't mean shit to me. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you was know, out there for real. Yeah, when you out, <laughs> hey, when you out there, man, for yeah, real, yeah, for yeah, real, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The only star you know is in the sky. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, we right. don't we don't believe in stars. You know, pimps don't fuck with niggas. That's we didn't fuck with suckers. We didn't fuck with busters. Yeah. Pimps only fuck with pimps and hoes. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, that's right. how we was. You know what I mean? And that's why it was so successful for so many years mm-hmm. until niggas started exposing the game. Right, right. Once that shit got on HBO and started getting on the internet, mm-hmm. then you start seeing the downplay. But pimps actually lived real well. You know, it was a secret society. Yeah. Niggas was getting real money. They didn't want motherfuckers. You and know, I, 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 like I didn't them. want to talk to 50 Cent back then. Right, right, right. I don't give a fuck if he was doing PIMP3. I right, didn't right. want to fuck with him. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we don't give up game like that. Right, right, right. You know, but once the game, once Don Juan walked it into another level mm-hmm. and it became acceptable and we, you know, we kind of following Don Juan's shoot because right, he's right. like the pioneer of this shit. Yeah. You know, he was on Oprah and all that shit before all of us. Right, right, right. You understand right. me? So once, I, <laughs> so once I got hip to what they were doing, I just took it to another level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I started monetizing. You know, if you get my movie Pimpology, I said, I'm going to be the intro, outro man for all rappers all over the world before I ever did one song. Next but, thing you know, you know what I mean? I come down to Atlanta, I get with Jermaine Dupree. Spoke it in existence. And next thing you know, everybody Fact. wanted me on albums. You know what I'm Fact, saying? Fact, yeah, you just spoke it yeah. in existence. Man, I, man I'm talking about, hey, listen, yeah, man. I've been doing that your whole life, Hey, I'm going to tell you some funny shit, though. That's the manifesto. That's all the messages that I'm getting. I'm going to tell you all some funny shit. One day, me, T.I., T.I., he, he remember this. They they, they they booked both of us to, to, to host a pageant, right? Mm-hmm. It's the NFL uh, Super Bowl. So we host the pageant. And I'm sitting there, man, and all these pretty white women on there, you know, I'm thinking like, man, I'm going to knock one of these bitches, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And they talking about, you know, y'all, we want y'all to judge it, man. And, I, and I, so I, I'm looking at these women, and I'm looking at these white people. I said, how in the hell did I get up here, man? <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm, I'm hosting a pageant. So I'm just saying, man, you know, whatever the mind believes, it can see, the mind can yeah, achieve. That's facts. If you change your mentality, you can change your reality. That's you change facts. your listen, aptitude, listen. you can change your... You know, your, your, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your attitude. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So basically what I did was I realized that I had a purpose and I, I look at life like a GPS. The roads that you take to get to your destiny is never going to be the ones to get you there. It's going to be your detour. So when you drive in a car I like and, and, and you driving like down that. 75 and you get off on Northside Drive and then you, you run into traffic, it says detour. Right. What do your GPS say? Rerouting. Rerouting. So right. you know what I mean? I thought that I was going to be the pimp guru of all time. <laughs> I end up being a literary agent, yeah, yeah, you know right, what I'm saying, me, right. and, 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 a, and a producer. It's funny how right. life works You know what I'm saying, me, but at the same time, you know, my goal and my, and my purpose was, you know, to be successful 
and to create generational wealth for my children right, right. and to be able to make sure that they grew up and go to college and they did. Right, so, right. you know what I mean? So it was amazing how my life took a transition from where I wanted to go to actually where I went. Right. So, you know, that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, you got to always remember, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, don't, don't get upset. Whenever you're doing something major, young people, remember this. You always, every breakthrough going to be followed or, or going to be before, it's, it's going to be pre previewed by a, a fall through. That's fair. A lot of times, you know, when you think God is hurting you, he's really helping you. You know what I'm saying? So all the times, every time when something bad happened in my life or a major catastrophe came, it was always followed by a major success. Fact. You know, because sometimes God, he would put us in a precarious situation only to make sure that we going to give him the glory. Because if we don't come out of something, then how are we going to get God the credit? You know, we don't give a lot of credit, uh, Jehovah, whoever you call him, you know what I'm saying? If we don't give him the credit, he's not going to be happy with that. So how God benefit from your successes and his blessings is when he bring you through and you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, whoever. And then from that, you know what I mean? God is happy because he loves to be praised. You see what right, I'm saying? Right. I so, definitely want to get into uh, talking about more about the, the pimping and hoeing in this corporate industry that you're involved in. Cause I know as a, as a, as a as somebody as an alpha male, you see a, a, a pimp and a whole relationship and everything. Mm -hmm. So explain us to it. How are you able to remain but, but on I wrote, your square? I me, mean, I wrote a whole book on it called <laughs> Pimp Alley. <laughs> now, in, in the first chapter of my in book, stores. it say purse first, first ass last, right? Right. So th the perfect example to give you purse first, first ass last would be McDonald's. You go to McDonald's, you order two all-beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. That's the Big Mac. <laughs> right. You pair one to one, but they don't give you the Big Mac to win the two. So I always told the bitch, if you think I'm handsome, pay my ransom. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you can't give me no assistance, <laughs> keep your motherfucking distance. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Drop it to my pocket like a racket. But what I was really telling her was that I was valuable. Right, you know, right. and then I look at it in the context of a Picasso or a Michelangelo. When you look at them paintings, you say, what makes these paintings so expensive? And then when you look at them and you say, wow, man, that ain't nothing but some paint and some uh, a canvas. But what happened was somebody said that they were valuable. valuable. So a lot of times when women try to get sex with me, I said, look here, baby, I ain't tending under the zipper. You know, I got to meet on my Peter the longer you stay, the longer you have to pay. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all, I'm going to fuck with you. I said, yeah, you going to get on like you been shit on there. Back up like the OJs and spin up off me like the parkade. Yeah, yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to get paid. If you ain't paying, I ain't playing. Yeah, and that's what corporate America do. You get some insurance. If you go get some insurance, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? You pay for... 20 years insurance. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you didn't pay into this this cause, you die, and you don't even get the benefit. <laughs> but it's purse first ass right. last. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? I mean, anything you know that you do is purse first ass last. You right. know what I mean? So this the what doctor, this what the life lawyer. is expect. Like you, you're not gonna go in Walmart and take anything out of there of value right. without paying for it first. So what a pimp do, he can say his services is valuable. Right. The whole really don't need the pimp. She could do it on her own. But the pimp is courageous enough and crazy enough to say, bitch, you need me. Right. When she really don't courage. need him. That's courage. That's the same thing in the music <laughs> business. They really don't need, uh, 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 Jeezy really don't need Def Jam. Right. You know what I'm saying? They don't really, T.I. really don't need Atlantic Records. Right. You know what I'm saying? They really don't need none of these people. But with the record label say, look, it, you can't do this without me. You know what I'm saying? So what they do? They go hire a publicist, which ain't number $5,000. They get a marketing team, which ain't number but a few thousand dollars. And they spend about $100,000 to make a, a couple million dollars or maybe $100 million off of you. And then when you say, I want to do a song with Player Pancho, what do they say? Uh, no, we don't want to approve that song. So now you the hope. And you don't even know it. You hot as a firecracker. You selling millions of dollars worth of records. Have you told these rappers that? Yeah, I yeah. told him yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds sound like, it sound like he's saying everything is pimping. It sounds like he's saying everything is pimping. Is pimping right. that's, what, that's, that's, that's what I want the, the, yeah, everybody on the that. show to understand. But hold We're on, hold on. Let me say this though, Amir. Don't just talk, put it on talk the, to the mic. You, look, look at any of these women up here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Walk up to them and say, hey, what's up, baby? How you doing? If they really like bought that game, they're going to say, take me shopping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If they don't say, take me shopping, can you pay my bills? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we, we 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 actually accept that, but if a guy asks for that, that's taboo. But Whoa. these women 
are really, like I said. Know I your worth, King. You, you, <laughs> know your worth. Listen, you can't, you can't get mad at the pimp because one thing you got to remember, who get the money first, the pimp or the hoe? The, the pimp. pimp. Oh, the hoe no. get the, the money. Hoe money first. The hoe get the money first. The hoe get the money first. She got to bring it back to the pimp. So who did she pimp? She pimped the soccer. The she trick. The trick. She pimped the trick. You paying for something that costs no money? No. Right. So let's talk about the the, 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 the the dichotomy, the triangle. The pimp, the hoe, and the trick. Let's mm-hmm. talk about that. The pimp, you know. Get out your notebooks. The, the, right. the pimp, <laughs> pimp means put it in my pocket. That's what pimp means. You know, a hoe ultimate objective is to break a pimp down. Because a hoe, women are more smarter than men, believe it or not. Right. You know what I mean? Whether you want to accept it or not, women are highly intelligent. Mm-hmm. Women have what men don't have. That's emotions. You know what I'm saying? We only have 30%. A woman have 70% of emotions. Men have stability. That's why he always take care of the house. That's why he always want to do something you know, for the kids. Now, but here's the secret. A pimp give a hoe or, or female that's a, a, a strong female, he, he give her a challenge. So throughout the relationship, her whole thing is to try to turn him around and right. make him weak. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. That's why you see a lot of domestic violence in the pimp game because women, they're going to challenge you. A woman, she could say, where you going? Where you been? You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, who you been with? And all this and that and other. You be like, oh, baby, you know what I'm saying? I was just with my boys. What time What what, 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 what time y'all get there? You know, yeah, what, oh yeah, what she happened? Go in. And then, you know what I'm saying? After a while, she, 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 she break you down right. over a period of time. Next thing you know, <laughs> you be like, oh, man, I can't go, man. My girl tripping because she didn't woe you down. Because, right. see, God gave a woman the same thing he gave a skunk. A white stripe in the belly full of funk. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't argue a woman. You can't outthink a woman. And I don't give a fuck if you're a pimp or whatever you is. She gonna break you down. You know what I'm saying? So a pimp know that. So his whole thing is to like try to stay strong, and, and that's what keep a bitch around. You know what I mean? Like say if you was at a, if you was at, at the casino and you was playing the slot machine, you put five hundred dollars. I tap you. I said, Mia, let me have the machine. Nigga, you crazy? I got five hundred dollars. I'm waiting for this motherfucker to hit the jackpot. Well, see, once a woman invests so much money into a pimp, a pimp know he's the jackpot. She's looking for the jackpot. Right, right. You know, maybe a ring, you know, maybe a relationship. She, now right. she's delusional. But the, <laughs> the, biggest mistake, <laughs> the biggest mistake any hoe can Ladies, make. don't be delusional. Like she said this, that to make, is to believe that a pimp really love you. There's no love in the pimp game. Right. That's why when it's I went, business. when I first went to the game, I said, man, I want to triple by fast. You know what I'm saying? I went to the doctor, got tripped by fast. I said, move all the sympathy out of my heart. Yeah, I said, I don't have no sympathy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got so cold that I used to get up in the morning, like my nigga uh, Genesis, I used to stab myself just to feel something. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just how cold you have to be in the game. And that's what women, you know what I'm saying, me, like yourself, about pimps. Tony. That's why women well, we pay just, pimps. We just, said, we just were speaking about this uh, when we had a show uh, last week about Tantra. Shout out to Patai. Right. It's up on YouTube. Go check it out. And we were discussing how it seems like when you have principles in your male trying to stand on your square, it seems like the females like enjoy that, but then they're like, let me see if I can get him to break his rules. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me see if I can get him to say, hey, do what he said he wasn't going to do. That's right. you. For me. It, <laughs> it, it, it happens more in the square world than in the pimp world. Man, you know what I mean? Niggas, man, that's six, six. Be like, dog, I can't go nowhere, man. My girl tripping. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this nigga can take one hand and throw her through the wall. <laughs> but, but see, yeah. but she, she, she here, got him, yeah. She Controls got him. Mentally. That's why yeah, I yeah. say, I always tell I always tell niggas, man, you ain't smarter than a woman. I said, but there's certain things that you can do that break a woman down. Right. You can be extremely nice. You can treat her, you know, mm-hmm. respectful. You know what I mean? You can take her out to eat. You know what I mean? You can give her flowers. In the square world, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> because that's her weakness. Right, right, right. But that's but, not going to work on a square world girl. That's not going to work on a girl game. Right? No, no, that'll work on anybody. Anybody oh, you, that okay. get treated right, it, it'll work on them. Especially if they know you're a strong man. If you could mm-hmm. c- right, combine right, right. and mix the two. But, you know, they challenge, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it's just certain things. Like, sometimes, you know, I tell my son all the time, he said, Dad, this girl tripping on I said, trip back on her. He said, how I do that? She said, she don't answer your phone call, don't answer her phone calls. No. Everything she do, mimic what she do, watch and see what she do. Mm-hmm. She oh, go no, like, nigga, who you got that. over there? Like one time, man, this is a real story. You know what I'm saying? One of my partners, right? <laughs> I, I can't tell that. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell that. I ain't gonna tell that. It's, it's too deep, man. I, I, yeah, man. I can't, I, some of this shit, man, I can't the put on the, the radio. Hole, and who's the trick? Yeah, and they explain the okay, trick. Okay, the, yeah. the trick? Anybody can be the trick. You can be the trick. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's a pimp of the O in every situation. Right, right. When you go to Gucci and you spend seven thousand oh, dollars for a bet, you're a trick. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck if you do got hoes, you're a right, trick. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? If somebody come to you and they break break you off, then you know you pimp it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So like remember I said uh, with my, my, my book deal, I said I read the contract but I didn't read it completely. It had a clause that says that it reverts back to five percent, you mm-hmm. know. 
It said fifteen percent, but once it turned the paper back, we were the facts. So I didn't get that. So they pimped me. Right. I was a good hope. They made millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But then I came back and then I pimped on them for the audio book. Now I own 100% of the audio book. Right, right. So you battling with, you know, everybody is struggling and battling for supremacy right, in right. the game. Everybody want to get ahead. Everybody want to get over. Right. So whoever get over is the pimp. Whoever right. get played on is the trick. Facts. Right, right. And who else you say? Yeah, the whole the trick, the whole. We, had, yeah, 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 the we, we covered had, everything. We covered everything. Who, who, who is considered the ultimate pimp out here? And yo, and, and, and Uncle the, Sam. Exactly. <laughs> that motherfucker, man. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna have all he's, my hoes. Let me be the motherfucking collecting taxes he's right still here. On land. He's, and if you don't pay him, that's what he do. He put you on the pimp arrest. Yeah, that's facts. This motherfucker, man. I had employees, right? And I peeped the game. I said, "Damn, this motherfucker tell me to take employee taxes off and put them aside." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Damn, it's all these." Co- I said, "These motherfuckers, even if you is hiding money, then if you hiding money, it don't make a difference." If you have money on the mattress, they still gonna get it through the employee taxes. Right, right. Trillions of dollars. Amen. That's a pimp. That's Uncle, some pimp. Uncle, Uncle Sam got and his guess top what? Hat, what happened with Corona? On, Look and at Corona. Pimp. Oh man, listen. <laughs> we paid all them taxes. They only gave us twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars in seven months. Man, here you go. Y'all be out. Hold on, no, no. Twelve hundred. We paid twelve hundred. Well, look, look. Yeah, a lot of folks didn't even. I ain't get it. Oh, let me get your <laughs> let me get your social security number so I can get it for you. <laughs> That's facts. Well, listen, let's uh, we are gonna go to a commercial break when we commercial, get commercial, y'all. We can still be on live. Oh though. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we definitely still gonna be on uh on on Pimpin Cans live. Is that your Instagram? That's your Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Okay, it, that's uh. Once I post it, it's pimp, gonna be about five, five Pimp Can underscore. Oh, oh real, pimp, real pimp, pimp Can. Real Pimp Can underscore. Underscore. Correct, correct. Um, so we're gonna go to a song real quick. We're gonna go to Rollo the Pimp who raised you. I like that song a lot. Yeah. Um, but Shouts out that boy when, Rollo. Yes, Rollo sir. the when, Rollo. when we get back, though, I want to get into um, the book writing more and, and find out exactly. Okay, we can get so we can talk about what you're doing in the down. community. Yeah, what you're doing in the okay. community with the, with y'all, the young y'all that, stuff. We finna get into some positive. Tell y'all us, y'all yeah, can check out. Yeah, Pimpin yeah, 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 gone. Pimpin gone. We out of here. He turned into the professor now. All right, so let's hop into this. Rollo the Who raised you? His night 2.3 Real Definition Internet Radio Street Gospel Show. Bow. All right, all right. We are back in the building. His 92.3 The Real Definition. Oh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's Kimmy (laughs) Casanova. If y'all are wondering, like, yo, who was that last song? He just showed about it. Nowhere. Akil Ali. Saucy. Yeah, yeah. Akil Ali. Saucy with it. Um, Rocking like it. Just real plain clothes video. Real simple. Just a brown background. Real old school. Simple like a pimple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Simple like a pimple, man. But he was smooth (laughs) with it, man. So shout out to brother. Uh, You know, man. We might have him come on. He come through the city. Who knows? Anyway, we are back. Got my man, the myth, exactly. the legend. We finna kick some of that real game. Yes, Y'all sir. let yes, everybody sir. know now. Yes, now we finna get into the business. Yes, sir. We finna get in the... Now we talking to Professor Ken Ivey. Yes, sir. Now, yes. sir. So, where we left off, you were doing the thing with HBO, a couple other different corporations, um, starting to make money mm-hmm. outside of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, started to take a pivot, I'm guessing, at that round 31, you said. Right. Um, so, how do we get to the book? Well, first of all, uh, Simon & Schuster, which is owned by CBS, one of the biggest publishing companies in the world, they called me, they offered me Uh 25,000 because they seen on my website, uh, that's the time it was called uh, www.pippikin.com, and uh, they asked me, can can they give me $25,000? I told them they won't even pay for the front end clip on my bins. I said, y'all get on out here with that shit, you know what I mean? And the dude, Jeremy Stratus, who is my uh, publisher, he was really offended by that. So Mm -hmm. he can only get what, you know, his team allowed him to get. So at that time, you know, he kind of fade back for about five years. And then next thing you know, I'm super duper, you know what I mean? I'm all over the world, you know what I mean? I got albums and, you know, everybody know my name. So he came back and he said, man, I, I got enough to buy your bins now. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> yeah, okay. I said, what's the numbers? He said the number of my manager, Ed Davis, at the time, we locked the deal down. And then, you know, they asked me to write the book. I wrote the book in 30 days because it was my life. And I just, like I said, you know, you got to remember, mm-hmm. when I was in prison, I was a Moorish American. I was the Grand Sheik. Yeah. That's the leader of the Moorish Science Temple in, 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 in the prison. Right. So okay, I, to, I ain't know that. Okay, yeah, okay, okay write, Mo. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, Mo. It's Lime, yeah, Mo. Yeah, it's Lime, Mo. It's Lime, So I used to write, I used to write the, uh, the lessons, the Sunday school lessons for right. all the brothers. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I was used to writing. Okay. So I did it in 30 days. I shocked them. Mm-hmm. They said, we ain't never seen no book so well written and so, you know, so put together right. in, that, in this many days. I said, ain't nobody never offered me a quarter million dollars. Facts. I said, yeah. I said <laughs> hey, the but that's a lesson That's a lesson of standing on your square, though, yeah, too, yeah, yeah, Ken. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he came with the first offer. 
He was like, nah, that ain't enough. A lot of brothers would have took that just like, oh, exactly. man, you know, no, living exactly. something. Let's know your value. Know your worth, you right? Remember, your value. Man, I had as many as 16 bitches getting a 1,000 days. Yeah, so they were I was getting a lot money, of money, man. Yeah, yeah. Money wasn't like, money wasn't the issue. Then right, I had right. a, I had two, three daycares at the time, so I was getting a million a year. King of the kids. You know what I'm saying? So, That's you know, yeah, my, my, my people, you know, we had daycares and, you know, we had uh, businesses and, you know, real estate. So I've always right, been, right. you know, business sad, sad right. you know what I mean? So anyway, so... After that, the next book, you know, I seen the breakdown. I did it independently with mm-hmm. Lulu.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so when I did the book, I called, uh, I called Nick Cannon. I called Ice-T, Snoop Dogg, and E-40. And I told him, I said, put my book on your Instagram. You go on the Instagram, they, they still up. Right. So they put my Instagram. So that day, I sold 5,000 books at $20 a pop. So I made 100000 at that point, you know what I mean? Right. I was like, man, I'm independent. You know what yeah, I mean? Right, right. And, you know, I had leverage because I knew all these uh, another all master these famous man, people. Uh, another right, right. master man. Now, let me ask you. So, <laughs> when you, so you, you, was there any, was there any thought for you when you wrote the book? Like, a lot of brothers and sisters in the streets don't really read. In, right. our, in our current generation so when you was you hesitant at all like man I, 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 no, because brothers you know, even gonna pick this up because I know brothers and, and sisters inside behind the wall read but a lot of cats that's not be, not on the free wall, world yeah, yeah they not reading but much see, enough I wrote the book if you read it I wrote it like Think and Grow Rich mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like uh, Dale Carnegie you know how to win friend influ- influence people right. I was really you know an avid reader of those books mm-hmm. right. so what I did was I, I caught what we call parity you know the book is called The 48 Laws of Game right, right. The 48 right. Laws right. of Power right, so right. it's a parity the art right. of war the right. art of human chess so what I did I used those Machiavellian principles mm-hmm. and I put them in street terms right. you know and I, I was showing people how I applied what I read in these books to the streets, right. you know, and how I became successful and how you could become successful. So a lot of people, you know, uh, like the guy that owned uh, LA Fitness, he reached out to me through an email, mm-hmm. told me, man, your book really helped me in my in my business model. You know, a lot yeah. of people, a lot of businesses, people use the book too, right, because right. it ain't just for players and street people, it's for anybody who want to advance. You well, know yeah, I, I think right. I've seen from with Iceberg Slim's book and even with your writings, a lot of times you'd be surprised the people that are picking that book up Mm-hmm. And I read like the uh, LA Fitness, right? Where they like the rougher, the more edgier delivery, the realer feeling of an authentic person such as yourself, right? Giving them these pointers, I guess it does something for Corporation people. Corporation gave do. me 10000 to come speak to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They like to hear war stories. They like right, to right, hear, right. you know, uh, humble beginnings. Right. You right. Know? Overcoming stories. So a lot of stories, times, you know, yeah. when a person like myself who overcame yeah. and became successful and even doing what we doing now, you right, know, right. with the, the stuff we doing on Monday, right. you know, with the, the, the little meetings we have and, 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 and what I'm doing with Netflix and what I'm doing with uh, 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 Simon & Schuster and all these major book deals I just right. signed recently and the project we're doing called The Making of Autobiography Celebrity, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of those people, you know, when they see that, you know, they be like, yeah, you know, this is, you know, this, this, this is interesting, you know, right, right, we right. can use that uh, story in our business model where we can show our employees, look, if Ken can do it, Right. We came from nothing, from prison, from being in the streets, you know, from being a, a mm-hmm. major pimp in the streets, and now he's he's totally corporate. Yeah. You know, that's an inspiring story. Yeah, you like, a, you, like a, you remind me, it's like a, <laughs> uh, what was it, Don King that I would say, only in America, you know what I'm saying? But it's, only in America. it's one of that's those type idol, stories. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm from that's Cleveland, so that's Don King, That's why I model yeah, yeah. my, 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 my thing about, you know, when I seen, how I was reading uh, Only in America, and when I seen how Don King was able to go and get Muhammad Ali to do a, uh, uh, exped, uh, ex, ex, what they call expedition ex, 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 exhibition ex, ex, yeah, exhibition yeah. Uh, a boxing match for the, for the church or for the hospital and he did it for free you know it just it just it, 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 right there and he was an ex murderer ex 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 convict right, I said right. you know it's no limits you know Facts. so when you see Barack Obama and you see uh, Kamala Harris become mm-hmm the first African-American vice president, Mm -hmm. you know, now all our sisters know that there ain't no limit. All our brothers know that there ain't no limit. Mm -hmm. So Don King was my Barack Obama, you know, he was the one that inspired me to let me know that I can get up on these celebrities and, you know, I can, I can galvanize these people and let these people know. And I know, you know, that you had to be clever too. You had to have a mouthpiece. Well, he, I mean, he was an example of that, right? He he was able to use his street savvy and his his smarts to, you know, yeah, become, you know, probably the most well-known Fighting promoter, promoter in the history yeah. of the, the fighting, really. Hey, I, don't, when I, I can't met think of Don, Don King was like somebody to business Michael man, right? Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I met him in Vegas, that was like with somebody would equate. Nah, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Because you know he was from my my, my line of work. Right, you know, right. Another Midwest brother as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Streets, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. streets. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so, yeah. 
with the writing of the book, the first book's a success, everything's going well. Was there did you when did you really come up off the game? Like when did you go, okay, you know what, I'm I'm eating enough to where I can stop. Well HBO was the it was the breaking point. Okay. If a billion dollar company come to you and you sign a contract with them, you mm-hmm. got to remember I made money off the parties too. Right, right. So I was charging two hundred dollars to get in the party because it was HBO and I charged mm-hmm. fifteen hundred dollars for for a table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm making two, three hundred thousand then every time I throw a party, you know, my lines is way mm-hmm. out, you know, and then I'm inviting Loom and David Banner and Two Short, all of them, they come right, to right. my parties for free. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like different levels of business that you be like, man, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean you can get out this bra, but you know, why should I take felony chances for Mr. Mean of Money? Facts. You know no, what I'm saying? And, 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 so, yeah, people should, just for two seconds. That's an important point. Because <laughs> yeah. that happens a lot. Like I'd be like, right. bro, why are you yeah. doing all this for yeah. the time don't match yeah. the money, man? And it's you know, hey, man, chances, <laughs> man. We hey, ain't listen, taking man, a chance, bro. Listen, man, hey, to a pimp. One year is dog years. Mm-hmm. You know, dog years, 10 Seven years, 10 years. years. So pimps don't years. want to go to jail. Fact. Right. That's Sunday, though, because you can't exercise game in jail. You right, know what I right, mean? Right. You know, it, it ain't nothing but some niggas in there. Right, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be in that motherfucker. Y'all you know didn't mean? know. That's what's in there. So, right. so no. everything they do is designed to not to go to prison. Right. You know, and that's basically how I was able to do And then once, you know, when the white man changed his laws, I changed my laws. You know, I told all of my hoes, you know, I'm, I'm out, I'm gone, I'm done. You know, they was like, no, 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 Ken. I said, no, I'm, I'm gone. And didn't nobody believe him. Everybody thought he was going to fall off. Ain't nobody going to know me no more. Right. The next thing you know, I'm on all the videos. It's uh, BET. They said the countdown. It's 10 videos. Pippi Ken on three of them. Yeah. On the no, three, I remember some on of the them three, days top growing 10, up. Three. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. when you think about that. You I was on, tell you was on the, the best video you don't have to, in hip hop history, have to be in the streets which to is be international player. I remember famous. that. Right. I, ain't had a bitch, I ain't got a picture of a bitch. Right, right, I ain't right. a bitch in years, but <clears throat> niggas still respect me for my game. Right, right. You know, when I come around, you know, niggas still be trembling like, man, I hope he ain't trying to get these bitches. One nigga, <laughs> man, one nigga man, he, he told his bitch, bitch, leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, said, I said, homie. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't even the game no more. He said, man. but man, just in case you have a relapse, this bitch hey. got to get up out of here. They say he ain't trying to risk it. Tell us about the international player video shoot, man. It looked like the, the oh, best place and fun, plan, funnest place on earth. Oh, man, right you know, there. first of all, it, let me say, Pimp C is my little brother. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me, me and Pimp C Rest slept on his pimp. mama couch. You know what I'm saying? When Pimp C was, when he fucked up, he was fucked up. Peace I was there with him. You know what I mean? And so, you know, he went to jail. When he went to court that case, Right. In in the mall, mm-hmm. at Sharp Time Mall, I was there. Okay, okay. He told me, Ken, keep going. He said, I got some powder on me. He said, keep going. He had some powder in his pocket. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I kept going. He called a case. You know what I'm saying? I was going to visit him in jail. You right. know, that's why when you look at the movie Best of All Words, he said, Ken was the only nigga coming to see me. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I mean, and, I didn't know he was going to blow up. I didn't know that Jay Prince that was going to put that campaign behind him and Bum right, D right, that right. was going to say Free Pimp C. And that shit was going to become bigger life. But when he came out, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of like the nigga that he got mm-hmm. money with. You know, we got hundreds of thousands. We had a $3 million deal with Universal. Mm-hmm. He just died. You know what I mean? Right. When he said, Be a Pippi King going to do five movies? Yeah. Well, he was going to play me in a movie. You know what I mean? That's oh, okay. how close we was. Right, right. You know, we travel, you know, getting money. I go like in the hood. You know, mm-hmm. I go like with them, them goon squads in Mississippi. I go down there and fuck with them niggas. And them niggas, you know, they spend a gene on that. Them niggas spending twenty five thousand dollars a show. Right. They fuck it with me, you mm-hmm. know. Then I go back and we go into a little regular ass studio in a nigga basement, and me and PMC go down and get another twenty five thousand. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the kind of shit. I showed him how to hustle. What do you say in my movie? Best way he said, me and Ken, we rap hustle. I showed him how to rap hustle, which mm-hmm. you see Boosie and all them doing. Pimp was doing that shit way back right, then, right. way yeah, back Boosie, when. Boosie eating yeah. that up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Boosie eating it up now, but Pimp C, <laughs> and, and I was the originator of right, that, right, you know? Right. And, and it's I, a biz- I, that's a whole business model, brother. That's a whole, yeah, that's a business model. You <laughs> whole be business model. You can't be skinny of your kind, man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I a was, lot of brothers, a lot of brothers, see, but you have a real street background. A lot of brothers go out here and they perpetrate that. And so when it comes time to actually go sit down and, and deal with some brothers and sisters that's really from that, right. it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, man. Yeah, they, you know, they be on trimmer. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, I went to know, a, is this safe? Like, like, why you, why you I went come? to a nigga house in Memphis, right? Mm-hmm. When I tell you the niggas had 100 guns in there, they want, <laughs> they paid me $1,500 to do an intro. Yeah. They had weed, cocaine everywhere. I know them niggas was testing me. They said, come on, Pete, you know what I'm saying? Come on to the spot, right? You know what I'm saying? We got the studio in the basement. Yeah. So I went through there, you know what I mean? They thought I was shocked. 
But what they don't know, my niggas on the east side of Milwaukee, this mm. how they live too. Right, right. So I was used to that shit. You know yeah, what I mean? I was yeah. used to seeing the guns <laughs> and the drugs. Right. So I walked yeah. through that motherfucker like it wasn't nothing. And so dude, when he was when he was taking me back, you know, to where, where, I, where I had to get dropped off, mm. he said, man, man, I watch you, Pip. He said, you didn't even flinch. I said, man, that's where I'm from. I'm from right, this right. shit, you know what I mean? So this shit don't phase me, you know right. what I mean? When I go to the hood, you know, I know when you trying to do something to me. I can look in your eyes and tell when you're on some bullshit. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Average nigga, he on some bullshit, but it's always about a bitch or about a nigga that he grew up with that he jealous of. You know, rarely do a nigga kill a nigga that he don't know. Right, niggas right. always kill a niggas that they know. That's where the funk started at, you know what I mean? A right, nigga right. walking, see me walking, I mean, he'd be a damn fool to just say, I don't like that nigga, you know right, what I right. mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's you, Yeah, that's facts, it's usually <clears throat> not strangers that's uh, I, I used to, I used to <laughs> that's be like, I don't like that yeah. nigga too. I used right. to be like, I don't like that nigga, but the nigga might have did something foul to me. Right, right. You know, he might have did something, said something slick when we was in the penitentiary. Right. So I was like, yeah, nigga, home now, you know, I don't fuck with that nigga, nigga's a buster. You know, but niggas ain't gonna call you no bust if he right. don't know you. Facts, facts. Yeah, so, yeah. so with um, so with the with with the movie stuff. I'm sorry, not the movie stuff. With the book stuff. Yeah, how many movies have you actually been in? Oh, man, I've been in so many movies. Yeah, man. I don't when even I, count that when shit. I pulled I, it up, man. You you handed me about ten. Lot. I was like, yeah. I, I produced know. personally about six of them, but we got uh, two more coming out. We got one called Jail Tale dealing with the criminal justice system because you know America is 5% of the world's population 25% of the world's prison population yes. so when you think Facts. about prison in terms of African Americans we only mm -hmm. have 6% eligible guys young African Americans go to prison but we have 51% of the prison rate. That is a serious dichotomy. Right. Not only is it a serious dichotomy, it's a serious disparity. And, you know, we can see how, you know, they they doing this thing. So I got Rick Ross and Ice T and Tariq Nasheed, all of them to speak on that, Judge Joe Brown. Okay. So we did a whole project on that. Then my other project is called For Rags the Riches, where we got billionaires and millionaires. You know, I kind of did it like a book where we talk about different principles like prosperity, mm -hmm. you know, imagination. And each one of these characters who are millionaires, they speak on that. And I kind of, you know, talk about my life story and tell young people like, man, this is how you go for rags and riches. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then we're doing a special with with, with the, uh, the book, you know, with all the artists that, I'm, that I assigned, you know, to my uh, agency. Publix. You know, I'm doing stuff for them, too. Right. So with... Um with with the artist, with the artist, the making of the autobiography. That's what I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. So, you got your book deals going. When did you say you know I want to help brothers put their own books together? Yeah, well, see, that's 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 why we're doing the making of the autobiography. Right, because, right. You know, we got Turk in there. Turk, right. he had got in a bad situation. Turk from the hot boy. Right, right, right. So right. he called me Long up and he he asked for my advice. You know, and uh, what I did was I was able to give him some advice on how to how to monetize that. So he got out the deal and I hooked him up with a publishing company and I showed him how to do the audio book. Now mm -hmm. he making, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right, right. You know, if y'all y'all went at the meeting where he talked about it, you know, and then, you know, Rick Ross, mm -hmm. you know, they wrote books, so you know, I'm I'm partnering with them and gonna put them out there in a positive way. You know, the people Ice T, Boosie, all of them you know, now what, what you get my book was out they now. open to this when you first when you first started <laughs> well, pitching well, us the brothers was they like well, years you, over there at first they're like man I don't know about the book well you book, know the, the pitch was the Ken Ivy Literacy Program uh -huh. to teach young people how to read okay, so that yeah. was the whole purpose of me getting into the literary uh, business because to, 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 I remember I was inspired by Iceberg Slim right right so because Iceberg Slim inspired me I know people that was inspired by me so if right. they're inspired by me they're going to be inspired by Boosie by Ice-T right. by Little Baby by you know anybody that we can sign right, right, Bruno right. Mars you know, we you know we got to check for all of them. Yeah. You know, I'm the, I'm I'm the dude with the bag. I got the bag for real. Right, and I think you know everybody I mean? kind of wants for to real, tell their story real. in that way anyway. You know what right? I'm but you got to have those numbers. I can't right. just sign you because you're my friend. Right, right. I, you got to have you know serious numbers that these people can get their money. You right, know, right, right. and because right. you're talking about corporations. Right, right. You know, and, and and then if I sign one of my partners who ain't got no Instagram right. followers, who ain't got no Facebook following, and he flop, then right. that's a flop on my head right, on right. my behalf. So I try to sign the people that I'm relevant to or I'm privy to that's actually doing something right Make now. Make a move. Yeah, following. It's smart business. I can also, <laughs> but, but for my partner, if he want a book deal, I can show him how I got mine. Mm -hmm. I can show him how to do it the independent way. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. Which is really more money because now every dime you get, you keep. You right. see what right. I'm saying? Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-headed monster, you know what I'm saying? I mean? right, right. But you know, the, the reason why we do the celebrities is because kids you know, they want to hear from these guys. Right. And this is going to inspire young people to read. Once you start reading, you're going to end up being a pimp and can because reading is fundamental. It is. And I would have never read that book. I'd still be out there yeah. either in, 
I'd be dead or in the penitentiary. Right. You know no, I, I tried to get around when I was younger. I used to try to get around reading. I mean, I tried to come up with every excuse why. Yeah, I don't agree. They got videos. and It's just certain information that you can't find anywhere. Well, it's just certain stuff they only put in the book. They didn't put it in it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't, Man, but yeah. it they didn't you mention know. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't Man, mention it. It helped you. Reading help you. Right. Broaden your horizon, it does, man. It does, I mean, it, does. it makes you think better. You know, if you got the more knowledge and the more stuff you got in your head, the more conversation you got. Conversation rules the nation. Fact. So you know, I try to tell people all the time, man. You know, just you know, always try to you know, the only university you ain't gonna never graduate from is the University of Life. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. That's fact. I learned something just recently. You know, a partner of mine did some some crazy stuff to me. Mm -hmm. I said something crazy. You know, we've been knowing each other for years, but you know, what I'm saying I didn't realize. The, I didn't get educated on what was going on until later on in my life mm. because I was blind. I was self sabotaged. You know, I was always thinking like, if I make a million dollars, I got to bring them to a million dollars too. Right. But the, the real thing is, I was supposed to go make the million and then come back and get them and show them how to make the million. Facts. So you know what I mean? It took a lot of ups and downs for me to really realize. You know what was going on. Right. Once I let that situation go and I took that book back off my back, that's all it is—a dead weight. Right, right. I got that dead weight out of my life. Then I started being prosperous. I started making moves that I should have made 20 years ago. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I learned way later in the game. You know. Facts, so, facts. Yeah. Okay, so I want to get into uh, when we come back. I want to get into uh, quickly a little bit of relationship psychology. Mm -hmm. And then also was just going to probably run a couple quick questions about current events past. You just see what your thoughts are on a couple of things that's going because a lot of stuff going on right now. Okay. Uh, 2020 has been an interesting year. So when we get back from break, we will be diving into a, a relationship psychology, which will definitely be interesting. Uh, so we're going to go to another song. Demos, what you got there, player? Um. This computer is not. Man, put on the international player, man. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's what you said you wanted to play. Was the international? I was, I was gonna go out with that. Oh, you was gonna yeah, go was out gonna with that. Oh, I was gonna say that's what he said he wanted to play from the get go. Was the international? <laughs> nah, he got. Nah, he said he wanted to do international players, but I guess we was gonna leave on that. But I was like, maybe we should do Gorilla Pimpin'. But whatever, you know, it's a pimp day. Whole hundred songs to pick from. That was one of the songs on the playlist. Ready? Good. Yeah, yeah. International players anthem. We are this thing his 92.3 real definition in the radio be back in a minute bow yeah so what's going on what's going on shout out to primo rice yeah 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 shout out to primo rice man primo rice did his thing on that record that we called pimpin king man yeah pimpin king oh yeah he i told y'all it's a pimp in a hole in every situation hey man at least it was a good song sometimes you the pimp hey it was a good song though that's you know it's marketed man i'm a pimp to market you know i'm gonna get hey i'm gonna get the credit yes sir i'm gonna get the money <laughs> like the prophet said, give me the credit, let the cash go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes, sir, yes, sir. It's okay, a jewel so right there. We are back. Yes, that was. We are back. <laughs> and I want to discuss before we get out of here um, with the Nefertiria show coming up um, in the next hour with you a little bit of relationship psychology. Um, I'm on. I'm recently more in the dating scene out here. It sucks. Uh, males and females don't seem to get along. It's just it's ridiculous out here. And so please, please give us some words of wisdom and dealing with to try to maintain relationships with females and males um your thoughts on you know what males are looking for with females because i know there's a lot of women that are always trying to figure out what do men really want and then your thoughts on you know what what um what females are looking for from a strong male how to be that alpha that uh that dominant male things like you know well you know women as i expressed earlier are extremely intelligent so a man so, needs to have to, uh, I think it was Elijah Muhammad said, and Malcolm X said, a man had to be even seven years older than a woman. Elijah well, Muhammad. Had, Elijah yeah. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He said you got to be seven years older than a woman or you have to be extremely in intelligent or have something going on. Mm -hmm. You know, women, I learned over the years, you know, they pay attention. Right. If you say, we're going to go to the movie, we're going to go down to Lenox Mall, then we're going to go and get something to eat. You know what I'm saying? You'll forget about it. But she will remind you of everything <laughs> you said you're going to do. Right. And, you know, we just literally forget. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, women are tactful. Mm -hmm. Like if a woman arguing with you, don't never 
take what she say for face value because she's like an airport. You ever see a plane fly around an airport? Mm. She just flying around. She waiting to land. And mm. when she land, that's what she really want to talk about. Yeah. Who's that bitch number in your phone? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to understand how a woman thinks. Right, you know what right. I mean? You know, women, you know what I'm saying? Me, they require a lot of attention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Me, they love attention. Right. You know what I mean, you give a woman a lot of attention. You damn near cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're an ugly dude. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. You can still give a woman enough attention and she'll crave that more than she'll crave, you know, anything else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then we got if you cheat, man, man, don't take every girl number, man, and yeah. put her in your phone. Cause she go to she go Listen, when you fellas. go to sleep, she, uh, when you when you when you try to get on Instagram, she's looking over you getting right. that password. And she gonna definitely she gonna go through your, your DM, she's right, gonna right. go through your phone and you're gonna mess yourself up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, you know, as, as, as brothers, you know what I'm saying, we got to kind of plan our, our seed. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, men we, men are actors and women are reactors. So everything you mm, do, she mm. only reacting to what you do. Right, 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 she right. wants you to be the leader. She wants you to lead her. That's alpha game. If you don't lead her game. and she see you a bitch-ass nigga, she going to treat you like a bitch-ass <laughs> nigga. Facts, Point facts. blank. She going she to talk shit to you. She going to talk crazy to you. But if you're always no. nice... You always respectful, right. and you know you always say what you mean to mean what you say. It's gonna help you go a long way. Say what you mean to you know? mean what you yeah, say. say. I think a lot mean, of brothers have say. an issue yeah. doing that. A lot of females, because I talk to females, and they be like, "I just want them to keep it real with me." Yeah. And it's like I talked to Rob, like, "Bro, if you would have just told her the truth from the jump, you would have been in a different position, yeah, let's, right?" Let's but hear it from was, a female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slide on in. <laughs> 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 get on in there. Yeah, go ahead, baby. Long I feel way. like this. If I like you, I like you. But if I feel like you a liar and a schemer and you're trying to get over, that's where we have the problem. It's not because you're doing what you're doing. Because I'm gonna do what I want to do. All humans gonna do what they want to do, right, right. but don't lie about it. That's that's what's called being one hundred. I mean, Nobody want to feel say like they getting mean. played at the end of the day, male or female. Right. That's how I feel about it. But if you gonna do what you do, be open, be honest. Be if sp- you like to have seven hoes. Tell a bitch you like to have seven hoes. I told you. It's gonna be hoes. <laughs> it's gonna be hoes that said, fuck with you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Nah, not, you be, you're yeah, not gonna fact. miss you be out on opportunities many, for being right. honest. You will be you surprised. You fuck yourself up when you're trying to lie all the time. Right. That's, see, that, that's, that's why pimps are so successful because facts. They tell women the truth. The you truth. Know what I mean, the truth is a deadly and, thing. And, and, yeah. Hey, look. You know, you want to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're going to be the seven bitch. You ain't going to be the bottom <laughs> yeah, bitch. You know right, what I mean? Right. I got six hoes. You're going to be number seven. All right. And, you but, know, pimps and hoes is, is strange, but they got the weirdest relationship, but it's the realest relationship. Right, right, right. right. It's you know the most what I mean? I think, like, that, I think that type yeah, of honesty yeah, scares yeah. a lot of people because people are so used to having fake-ass relationships. Right. Two yeah. people, you know, being fake, not even being real to themselves and trying to have a real relationship is weird. But that's how everybody is trying to do it usually. Instead of coming to the table like, listen, this is what I'm on. It is what it is. You either down with this or you're not. And, you know. But like Sister Girl said, you know, I mean, if you really just want to be fucking with a lot of women, if you let her know, then she she, she got a choice. She to got say, I, think, I, don't I don't think brothers want them to have a choice. I think a lot of brothers don't want to have a choice. Because like the, like the sister right. said on Instagram, Women don't need no verifications. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. make their own decisions. Women, Facts. a strong woman gonna make her own decisions. She Facts. can create her own reaction. But you know, in every, in every, you know, in every, every cause, there's an, every effect have a cause, a cause right, and right, effect. Right. So you got the cause and effect. So a lot of times you can cause situations that's not there because of your character and the correct. thing that you're doing. You see what I'm saying? Correct, correct. So a lot of times, you know, if you're respectful and you know you do certain things, you're gonna generate respect. That's right. like. Mm-hmm. Me, even when I see a bomb on the street, mm. I respect them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I respect, I don't have no respect to persons. Everybody get treated the same to me. Right, 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 and right. that tend to help me out. You know what I'm saying? That's even females and stuff like that. Like, you know, like I fix credit. You know, mm. my son got a credit business. Mm. You know, so I deal with a lot of females, you know, they got a lot of money. I don't try to holler at them. I don't try to, you know, go at their purse. You know, right, right. I keep it professional. Right. And you know what I'm saying? They like that. They respect right. me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And they, and they bring me more business. Right. You know, so it's a lot of perks to being real. Mm. You Fact. know what I'm saying? Fact. It's a lot of <laughs> real. It's perks yeah. to being be real. real. Might need to be yeah. a shirt. Yes, you know, so like y'all, y'all asked me yeah. to come down here you know, I don't give a fuck if we had to go in the wild bull's ass to get this cash. I'm coming, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, because exactly. I got to keep it real. Right, you right. Know? We appreciate and, it. And, and yeah. that makes y'all appreciate me more and respect That's me. Fact. Same That's thing fact. with a woman. That's just keep it real with her. Yeah. You know, just keep it real with her. And then, like you, like I said, man, if you, if you really ain't ready to settle down, don't play with that girl because a woman is the worst thing to make upset because ain't nothing like the scorn of a woman. That's a woman can hurt you in so many ways, man. That's a lot of brothers know that. A lot of brothers have learned that lesson. Yeah, seen the scorn. Yeah, a lot of brothers have learned that lesson. Now let me ask you this: what yeah. what a piece of advice do you have for the sisters uh, in this in the in the reverse? Uh, 
Well, you know, sisters basically, you know what I'm saying, they they just have to really learn how to, you know, to understand a man from the perspective of, you know, his his physical appetite. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? A lot of men like sex. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some sisters, you know It gets brothers in trouble. Some sisters a lot, they yeah. don't they don't wanna have sex because, you know, maybe they're on their period or maybe, you know, yeah. something bother them and stuff like that. Right, if right. your man wants sex, the worst thing you could do is not give it to him. Yeah. You know, if your man wants some head, the worst thing you could do is not give it to him right. because he's going to go get it somewhere else. I think it's in the Bible, actually. Men don't love to release. The, uh, <laughs> I think it's in the Bible. Men, men love to release. And Facts. sisters, you know what I'm saying, you got to get behind that man. Give him some freedom. Let him go out there. If he's going to cheat on you, let him go out there and cheat. Mm. Because guess what? If he ain't for you, he ain't for you. Facts. But you can't hold him down. Yeah, you, exactly. You, 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 uh, Running behind him and arguing and fussing and fighting nothing. ain't gonna change him. Facts. But a lot of times, I'm gonna give most of you sisters a secret. When y'all just let us go and be ourselves and let us do, and, and we go out there, we see all them punk bitches out there, them yeah, fake ass hoes. We, we say, oh man, I'm going shit. home to my real college. bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? My, my wife is <laughs> at home, facts. my girl is at home, and then he'll check himself. That's but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta give him a little room to let him know what he really got. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. go ahead, you know, go, go on around here. Okay, ATL got all these bad bitches right here, but they ain't as bad as I'm you the bitch that's been with you from the <laughs> yeah, beginning. Facts. I got you. What you're saying, you know, ladies, is alpha I'm the males one do not you. like you know I mean? control. Stop mm-hmm. trying to control an alpha male. And right. Stop trying to do that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, like most, most mature males aren't trying to hit y'all. everything that's walking. Everything that's walking ain't worth it. I ain't gonna lie. At this point, I'm 29 now. At this point, from like the age of 25 to up to now, I realized I want a nigga to be busy. Don't be all up under me all yes. the time. I don't want to be up under me because we appreciate each other more. Absolutely. Now we got something yeah, to you're share. To miss me. I can tell you about my day. You can tell me about. Yeah, I like to let a nigga miss me. Like, like, I tell you, day? I tell you something. Old cat. How was your day? Huh? How was your day? What you say? How was your day? Oh, my day was great. Oh, okay. I'll just ask. Look, I, yeah. I tell you, an old, an old player told me. He said, uh, once you retire from working. He was like, that's when you had the hardest times living with your woman because she's not used to you being there all the time and her stuff just around the house. He was like, so he ended up having to get a part time work or just go do something because just women, most women who are mature, they don't need you around like that. They don't need to be keeping track of you all the time anyway. But I think a lot of men feel like she's going to try to control me and a lot of women feel like he's going to try to control me. And I think that's where we get in a lot of issues. And another thing really what a lot of free. women do is women always... You know, when they get in a relationship, mm-hmm. it ain't with just Ken. It's with Ken, Poncho, and Sam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you bragging old shit right, that right. Sam did to you, and you're not allowing that relationship Play, to I prosper. Told you, that too, correct. you know what I'm saying? So you holding? It's called P. P was it post stressed? Traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, post traumatic stress PTSD disorder PTSD because you whenever you hold on to something that's gone, right. you allowing that to be in your head rent free. Yeah. So a lot of women, you know what I mean? Another nigga cheated on them. Yeah. So they they be leery and they be skeptical right. and they treat the dude that may be a Facts. dude that don't cheat. They treat him so bad and if you mm-hmm. confuse about it, accuse about right. of cheating a lot, they're going to really start Facts. cheating. Because mm-hmm. you That's know what I'm saying? It's That's just right. psychological. I had a brother say you don't know. Yeah, you're putting it out in the universe. I had a brother say you're not dating. When you date a woman, you're dating her last three or four relationships. You said you dating the last three niggas she talked to. Yeah. Then the niggas you dating. If she has a heel, you're heel. battling hey, them. And that's what herself. sisters need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sisters need to heel. let go of those old relationships and start off from ground zero heel, right, and then heel. build that relationship. And like I said, right, right. if you give a man enough room, he'll hang himself. He'll get tired of cheap. Right. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm an ex-pimp, so I'm going to tell all you women, I don't care if you're a nurse, a doctor, white, black, or Puerto Rican, my hoes used to date all kind of people. I mean, doctors, y'all think all these senators, y'all think they got a lovely relationship in the suburbs? Right. No, they dating the shit out of these black bitches and these white bitches. They buying plenty of pussy, right. but they smart enough. <laughs> we know they that. smart, they more smart. <laughs> See, a nigga want to fuck a bitch and get it free every day. You know, we, we so crazy, we want to fuck the bitch, get a number, then we want to fuck her over and over and over and over again. Well, the white man, he just give her $200 and gone, Nobody you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, I'm married, see you, bye. You know what I'm saying? And he go, he can have any woman right, he right. want. That's a big difference. You Facts. know what I'm saying? So Facts. when you think about it from that perspective, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, yes, you know, that's that's the problem. Sure. You know Facts, what I'm saying? Right. So, so you know, so real you can't quick, stop a man from cheating. You cannot. But you, but you can be humble enough 
to make him bow down to you. He's going to bow down eventually. Whoa, whoa, I'm say telling that again. You. you could be humble enough to yeah. make him bow down. Yeah, if a, a woman, sweet. amen, a woman's sweet. sweetness is, is, is a lot of women don't know that, that yeah. you attract more yeah. bees with honey and yeah. all. A lot of people don't believe that no more. They yeah. think that that's some old school yeah. shit that don't apply. Now you got to be ice cold like the hey, dudes. Man. But I'm I like, don't no man want no ice cold woman. Uh, I can't say the person. Women like a nigga a lot of times it's ice cold like that. I can't, like, I can't even say the person because it's. I'm just saying it all the time. Like, I don't see sweet women no more. Like, where's the sweet, graceful women? I can't Always. say who it is, right? <laughs> check this out. I can't, I can't say who this is, but check this out, Puncher. A person that's very dear to me, family member, he's married. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife argue all the time. All the time. They fight, argue all the time. Another lady, I ain't going to say her name, she always has something nice for him to eat. She always say something sweet to him. She let him cry on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Eventually, my brother... Well, <laughs> nah, I, 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 I'm leaving off. I'm leaving off. I'm, I'm about to get caught up. I ain't gonna say nothing. But anyway, more the story. Is. You know what I'm saying? The more the story is that, you know, if you ain't treating your baby right, somebody else will. That's facts. Right. You know, right. somebody what you call trash might be treasure to somebody right. else. Right. And Atlanta is full of women, and the men are scarce, and these women. Are in comp competition yeah, with each other, and, and it's if twenty-one you, it, to one. I you could be the baddest brown in Atlanta. You could be the bad, baddest brown in Atlanta, but you could be a ten in New Jersey. But you come here, you're gonna be a five, because there's some beautiful women here, mm -hmm. and they competing. They trying to take your man. Yeah. So the only way you can keep your man <laughs> is to be humble, Facts. be sweet, take care of him. You know, let him be a dog. Eventually, that dog gonna come home. Some and eventually, you gonna be able to tame him. When you say sit, he gonna sit. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mama tired, showed man. me that. Love, you know what I'm saying? My daddy, my daddy was a gangster player pimp. But when he came home, he was humble. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Cause my mama, she was she was a country girl, and she didn't do nothing but sit back and let him do his thing. After a while, you know what I'm saying? He realized that was nothing out there for him. And that's even with me and you and any other player out there. You know, after a while, you are gonna realize, man. Man, I'm out here, man, taking all these life chances. I can get AIDS. I can get set up. I can get robbed. I can get killed. I might as well just stay home with my boo. You know what I mean? Facts. And watch some TV. Facts. Then you dangerous. stop. Why isn't that known already? Speak though? it to them. Speak it to them. Because them. why isn't that known already? Because we know it's out maturity here. Maturity is and a it's thing. Not you nice. got to mature. Why? Know. Why is what not known, sister? Like, why does it take so long to get to that point? Because you know, like I said, you know, men like to release. You know what I'm saying? They like to they they like to ejaculate. They like to calm up and sun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> they always, you know, prowling. And then there's some women like that too. Yeah, like, sure. I said, like, I like I said, like I said, I, I, I said <laughs> in my book. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out. I said in my book, I said in my book, see, women know how to cheat. Right. A woman would go to Walmart that's next door to a higher regency or next to a a, a, oh, a, a yeah, La Quinta, yeah, yeah. and she'd cheat. Right there at that La Quinta. You might have just gave some game. And then, <laughs> no, no, I'm not trying to get no game. I'm trying to discourage it. You know what I'm saying? And she, and she would go to that La Quinta and, 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 and you would call and say, where you at, baby? I'm at Walmart. I'm at Walmart. Okay, yeah. FaceTime me. Okay, give me a couple seconds. I'm, I'm, the, I'm in the bathroom. She will walk right over there and FaceTime. But we, when we cheat, we cheat with, with we cheat on her and that's her best friend. Right, right, right. And we be all in the Way club. Way too close. And, and you know she gonna tell. <laughs> we do the dumbest shit. It's a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, man, I can't understand. I mean, I'm, that's why I'm glad I'm not a square. Right, right. Because the yeah, square yeah. shit yeah. niggas do. Oh, no, it's rough. It's, it's like, rough. man, these that's squares beta kill beta me, beta, man. That baby don't like. Niggas so, be like, man, my girl tripping, man. She caught me with a number. I'm like, damn, my well, nigga. Well, let, let me ask you about this since we hit hit the uh, the square of the beta male um, paradigm. Just real quick. There's a there's a big thing going on right now with the I call it the dinner hustle in the mm -hmm. city where all the girls are out just basically running brothers down for dinners basically eating a lot eating real good not giving them the, do you do do you subscribe to that do you think that's a smart dating tactic for brothers to be out here paying for large meals and 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 uh, <laughs> you know what I mean they're not getting no, nothing I don't either bro I'm taking her the crystal look 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 now let's get let's get political, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, Beyonce, uh, Cardi B, uh, Megan Stallion, mm -hmm. and, and uh, 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 Lil Kim, you look how hoish they act. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, 
and then you look at all these young girls that look up to them. Right. What happens is you, you create a culture of hoes. Right. right. Just like we right. created a culture of pimps. Right. That's why everybody think they're pimps now. All the rappers talking about they're pimps. Right, right. And all these bitches want to be hoes. You know, they want to wear uh, uh, slutty clothes and all this and that other stuff. And then when somebody uh, say, God damn, baby, that ass look good. It's a problem. You showing it, though. Yeah, you, know yeah. you don't want that attention, <laughs> yeah. but you're giving it. Right, 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 right. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you advertising this. Right. And then what happens is it demeanor real relationships like she was right, talking right. about why they don't know already is because, you know what I'm saying? You advertising yourself as a whore. You, you're around here. You know, every time the sound come on the club, you might as well be in Magic City. Right, you right, shaking right, your right, ass. Right. But then you don't want no nigga to be like right. rubbing right. up you. And and trying to gr- grind you with his dick, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You need to. It's very interesting. But yeah. they like have a, 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 It's like hand almost hand. a mental yeah. separation yeah. of the two. It's like they cognitive need dissonance. And they something. need a man up. Right, right, right. That's yeah. all the two. Man right. up and one up. Well, real quick, we gonna have to get out of here. We got enough tear coming in. But before we go, uh, I just want you to give all your information, everything you got going on, where people can find you, okay. where they can buy your all products, right. all that stuff. If y'all want to buy my products, uh, my Instagram is real pimp ken underscore. You want to buy my products? It's at Amazon.com. Type in my name, Pimpin' Ken. Uh, separate the Ken. Uh, Audible.com. Type my name, Pimpin' Ken. Go to Walmart. You can go to Target and type in my name, Pimpin' Ken. You can go to Barnes and Nobles. Type in my name, Pimpin' Ken. My books are sold universally all over the world. Chinese, Japanese, wherever. You know what I'm saying? Me. Uh, you know. Uh, basically, you won't want a movie from me. You want to buy movies? You can't get me personally. Just hit me up on my cash app. My cash app is 414-399-3611. Type in your information, and I would I would uh, express that to you. Make sure you add $5 or $10 for shipping and handling, depending on if you want express. It's going to take $18 to send a, a, a DVD express, and I'll send it directly to you. All right, all right, oh, all right. And uh, for all the brothers that's in the music industry, hit me in the DM, me and these brothers and Poncho and and Turk and Pastor yeah. Troy, we meet every Monday. Let's work. In the industry Monday, and what we're doing, we're coming together and with producers, with rappers, with editors, with uh, media, and we're trying, we're not trying, Punch don't like the word trying, we're bringing all these brothers together <laughs> for, for express purpose, so if you got to hit records, the first place we want you to come to is hit 92.3. Yes, sir. If you're doing a video, we want you to do videos with Zarki. You know what I'm saying? If you want to beat, you want you to do the beat with uh, Pancho. And that's how we build alliances, and this is how we get strong as a unit. You know, we got to practice group economics. In the Jewish community, the money bounced 10 to 16 times. In the Mexican, is 8 to 10 times. In the black community, is zero. We got to start practicing group economics. We have to start a a line of of forming co-ops where we can cooperate with each other. And to all my Moors brothers out there, Islam, Islam. you know what I'm saying? You know, long live Prophet Noble Jew Ali. Y'all know my mo. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, I'm yes, down yes. with the ism. You know what I'm saying? For yes, real. Yes, sir. Islam ism. All right, Islam so we're going to get up out of here. Play a punch. Uh, yes, sir. I'm about to say, say play it before we go real quick. Uh, yeah, man. Y'all can follow me. Everybody can follow me at um, P underscore stacks underscore ATL. That's P underscore S T A C K S underscore ATL. That's on the personal IG on my um, studio, VIP Music Studios. You can follow me at VIP Music Studios underscore ATL. Again, that's VIP Music Studios underscore ATL. We also have an event um, Space that we rent out for private parties, listening party, birthday parties, bachelorette parties, divorce parties, or you know what I'm saying, <laughs> whatever you need to go down. You know? All right, yes, but um, sir. yeah, man, y'all y'all stay tuned, man. We got a lot of things we're working on. You know what I'm saying? We got to get the bag, jab. We got to get the bag, clothing line. You know what I'm saying? You can follow me at get the bag, get the bag. That's the clothing line. Get the bag, get the bag. That's G E T T H E B A G G E T T H E B A G. Yeah, G. All right, <laughs> and we are up out of this that thing. Game. Street gospel show hits ninety two point three. We're gonna leave y'all with. Curtis Mayfield's If It's a Hill Below, we all gonna go. We out this thing. Here's 92. See y'all next week. Sunday, fun day. We got Izzy Jeff in the building and Egyptian Secrets coming. African Secret, I'm sorry. Did I say it wrong? African Secret. We out of this thing. Peace.